don't be scared to introduce yourself. Don't be scared to speak up because the sky is not the limit. It's bigger than that. The universe is huge. And Tampa is huge. Tampa is growing. So right now, if you haven't started a business, if you have the idea, start it now. The GenTech Podcast discussing business, investing, and marketing. Hey guys, welcome back to the GenTech Podcast, bringing you valuable and inspirational discussion with top business owners. Today we have on CJ Rodwell Thompson, CEO and founder of Booze and Bubbles. We're going to talk to her today about her background, how she came up with this idea for this unique drinking experience, and how she uses social media in her business. So CJ, thank you so much for being on this podcast. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be a part of the podcast, um, you know, just to share some insight Um, Today is my son's birthday, so we are, I just took some time out just to talk. I know we're supposed to take off when we have our off days, but as a business owner, I know there's never off day, you know, never. Yes, and you're a hardworking woman and we can see that. So I'm so excited to learn more about you. First, I want to start with, you do have your master's in public health. So that is amazing. Yes, yes. So I have my master's in public health. I graduated from the University of South Florida. So go Bulls. <laughs> um, I concentrated in epidemiology and community health. So um, it, it's definitely with the times what we live in right now with COVID um, and everyone focusing on their health and, you know, all those other external factors going on right now. I saw that this was a, a COVID business. So you came up with the idea during COVID. And tell me more about that. Like, did you have interest in, you know, mixology or, you know, artistic interest? How did you stumble upon this idea? So, fun fact, I was a wing house girl in college. I know. Um, (laughs) And so I have a little background in in bartending. However, um, I I never really saw myself being an entrepreneur. I'm going to be honest with you. I always thought myself was going to be like in a corporate setting. um, Somewhere high up in, you know, in public health. I never really... I never pictured myself here in the entrepreneur shoes. Um, how I got here is pretty much during COVID. Like you said, I had my son. I was breastfeeding. I I was away from him a lot. I just I wanted to find a way to be home with him, as well as make the same amount of money I was making as an epidemiologist. Mm-hmm. Um, and here I am. Um, I was on Pinterest one night, just scrolling. Of course, Pinterest gives us all the elaborate ideas, mm-hmm. and it, it birthed booze and bubbles, literally. It, it, it helped me birth booze and bubbles. I prayed on it. I, I wrote the vision. Um, and I started from scratch, and here we are. So you really took a risk. Um, you know, at first, you know, you obviously went with your bachelor's and then a master's in public health. So how did you, like, have that confidence and, and have that, like, ability to make that big risk and start this business? Well, you want to know, I really just took a leap of faith, honestly. Um, just having that background of just believing and trusting God in every step, I think that gave me the motivation and just determination to say, hey, go do it. Don't worry. Don't be fearful. You know, like my mom always said, scared money doesn't make any money. So I just had to... Um, I really just took a leap of faith and I trusted God throughout this process. Yeah, and, and thank God you did because look where it's gotten you now. So do you want to explain to our audience a little bit more about what Booze and Bubbles is? Yeah, so Booze and Bubbles is just a fun, exciting business. I really, um, I just enjoy being creative, um, create, creating like beautiful flowers, beautiful settings, beautiful drinks. Um, I, I want to give people the opportunity to experience something different when they come like the different type of bartending experiences they have of course we can have the mixology group and everything like that however i um i just want people to have fun i want people to be in awe like you know like so i want to give people something to talk about and i think this that's what really much booze and bubbles is pretty much portraying definitely and it's just such a fun business concept and especially you know being a mother you are so so busy so the fact that you were on this journey of motherhood and started a business at the same time is so impressive do you have any advice to give to maybe new mothers now who are thinking of starting a business no you know what um like i said my when i started my business my son was only one years old and i was still in the midst of breastfeeding 
And of course, it's hard to be away from your child when you're breastfeeding, you know. So for new moms and new parents, I just feel like you have to have, find a balance. A balance is everything when you're starting a business. You have to know when to cut off your phone at five o'clock in the afternoon and give it to your family. And I feel like a lot of a lot of new business owners don't know the balance between work and family. That's very important because you can lose your family and you can lose yourself in your business. So. I make sure that I make time for my son. Like right now, I'm working, but at the end of the day, I stepped away for 30 minutes just to get on this call, but I want to go right back to him. Um, and you, even with your spouses, like if you're married or you have a significant other, you need to make sure that you're doing date night every, every week or something like that because you want to make sure that you make time for them too. Yes, you have this baby that's your business, but at the end of the day, family is over everything. Yeah, so your um, husband, Terry Thompson, so he helped you out a lot with this business idea? Oh, he's my handyman. He's my he's my underpaid worker. That's what I call him. Uh, <laughs> that, that makes sense. <laughs> you know, what's the funny thing is my husband quits on me every day. He tells me, I'm done. I'm done, CJ. I'm not coming back. And guess what happens? He he's comes back. back. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. How important do you think it is to have either a business partner or an actual partner who shares your vision with you? I feel like it's important to have, um, it's very important because they need to see your vision. If they don't see your vision, then it's not going to be a great experience for you. It's going to be some a lot of ne negative connotations. It's going to be a lot of ne negative energy. You want to you wanna be able to have that person you can go express an idea to and they see it like right off the bat. You don't want someone to be like, oh, well, I don't think that's going to work. You want someone that can believe in you. When I brought this vision to my husband, the first thing he said to me was, babe, I can see that. You're going to kill it. And just those words he said to me gave me enough confidence to just believe in myself and just take it and just go from there. And every day, like even yesterday, we had an event and he said, babe, you killed that event. Those flowers were beautiful beautiful and it just gives me like that extra confidence boost that I need you know you can hear like other clients and say oh this is beautiful but when your partner says that it's 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 over I, I can't even explain it. it's just really it's a great feeling yeah it's definitely an amazing feeling so you said that you saw this idea on Pinterest so how long did it take you to make an idea reality okay true story I seen an idea on Pinterest that night. I expressed those that my interest to him. The very next day, I got to work. I started researching the market. I started seeing how much things were cost. I started doing my homework. And I feel like a lot of people, they don't understand that you have to do your homework before you do your business, you know? Um, and then after that, I was like, okay, I did my homework. It took me about two weeks to do my homework. I mean, thoroughly doing homework, like, all night looking at everything. Um, I started doing a business plan. As I'm doing my business plan, I'm like, okay, well, I need a name. I need colors. I need I need something. Mm -hmm. um, and I prayed about it. I got the name. It all came to me in a dream. It, it, it sounds so funny. That's cliche. Like, oh, it came to me in a dream. No, it really did. Everything wow. came to me in a dream. And I started my business proposal. Business plans are so essential when you're starting a business. You need to have lost, lost profit projection sheets. You need to know what costs are gonna be monthly. You need to know who is your target audience. If you don't know who you're marketing to, then you don't really have an audience. You don't have a steady business who you're, where you're trying to go. I know my market. I know where I'm trying to go and I know how much money I need and need to, and want to make. And I feel like it's very important to plan that so if you if you're starting a new business you have to have that strong foundation to thrive definitely i think that's such a good lesson to you know really knowing your target audience and also your location i feel like having this business especially in tampa bay with it thriving right now with so many events going on you know you really saw that there was a need for this and there was a market for this yeah so, absolutely. yeah how did you like get your name out there after, you know, that idea came to fruition? And how did you start to promote yourself? I hit the ground running. I, I, I didn't want anyone to pretty much hand me anything. I knew I had to work. I, 
I looked at my Instagram page and I had two followers. It was myself and my husband. I said, I have to grow this business. So I was in people's DMs. I was in these venues DMs. I, I was, I had business cards everywhere I was. I had a business card. Hey, check my business card. Hey, check out my business. And my business card wasn't like an ordinary piece of paper. It was huge. It was a big business card. It made a statement. I had QR codes. And one thing about businesses, we have to make it accessible for clients because they don't like the work. They just want it easy. So mm -hmm. instead of giving them like, hey, visit my website. No, use your phone, scan my website, get straight to my Instagram. You know, so um, introducing myself before anyone even says anything to me. Hi, my name is CJ. I own Booze and Bobos. Do you want to take a look at my business? You know, every mm -hmm. any opportunity I had, I I marketed my business. My shirts, any, all my promo, everything had Booze and Bubbles on it. My, my carrying bags. Um, my my biggest break was my very first client blessing i i put myself out there i slid in someone's dms and um i was like hey you know my name is cj i have these champagne walls i would love to you know collaborate with you on an event you know i had to give a little to get a lot mm -hmm. so you know even if that means by me doing a couple free events i had to do what i had to do to get there um so she reached out to me she said hey i have this big client they will love your champagne wall for their brunch. It's a Buccaneers brunch. I said, oh, okay, perfect. Come to find out, it was Cameron's Rates house we did. We did their, uh, it was a wise brunch. And that was my very first client. And I said, wow. From that moment forward, I, I had the audience I wanted, needed, and it was right there. And it was just it's just soaring from there. Like we, we, we did a lot of things for the Buccaneers. We did, um, I did the Children's Cancer Society. I have done, I was on Selling Temple in two episodes. Like, wow. We, it's, it's really been soaring. So I just think by putting myself out there, really being humble, really being resilient, really just really wanting to learn and show people that I was really hungry for success. They, they seen it and they just wanted to work with me. And I, I'm just so thankful. Definitely. And how does it feel to be a successful black owned business? You know what? I, it's exhilarating. And the reason why I say that, because sometimes black owned businesses have this negative kind of like negative outlook on them to where they're not professional. They're not clean. They're, you know, it's just ghetto. And in some instances they are, you know, they are not all, all businesses have their, you know, any, any, any race. But I feel like for me, it expresses more because I'm a young black entrepreneur. You know, I'm in my twenties. I started this in my twenties. It's successful. That means I'm level headed. And I and it kind of gives hope to the generation behind me. And they said, Hey, she was 20, 20 well, twenty one in my eyes. But <laughs> she was in her twenties and she started this business and it's successful. She has family. She's traveling. You know, she's in this all these great places. Um it's not about me. It's setting the example for other black owned businesses to get to where I am and to show them like, you don't have to outcast other uh, races and other ethnicities to grow because we all have to work together to where we have to grow. A lot of my counterparts are Spanish, white, Asian, you know, and I feel that for, for me being um, as open as I am, you know, and being as, you know, let me see, how can I put this? Adaptive. I have that chameleon uh, personality. Mm -hmm. um, it has got me a long way. So I, it's just, it's amazing. And I just, I really, I'm really happy to be a successful black owned business. Yeah. I mean, I literally have chills. Like I love hearing your story. That's so cool that you were on Selling Tampa. So tell us yeah. about that. Well, it was actually by my one of my good friends, um, Aunt Sophie. We went to um, college together, and um, she she's the epiphany of a friend who she was. If you're not in that room, she will put your name in that room. So if she sees the opportunity, she's gonna give it. She's gonna say, "Hey, my friend is this," and just by her doing that, the producers reached out to me and was like, "Hey, we would love to have your champagne wall for this episode," or blah blah blah, and. It was just an opportunity to give me bragging rights to use, you know, for other opportunities. And it's, it has opened up a lot of doors for me. And it was actually fun. Like, I, to be in those sets, seeing all the cameras and everything, it was amazing. 
So if you look at the trailer, I'm on the trailer popping the bottle of champagne. That's me. That's such an amazing opportunity. And I love also that you said you have to make it so easy for your customers. I think that's so important. Like you want to, you know, make it as easy as possible for your target audience to find you. And you're right. Like putting your website on a business card or your number on a business card is too hard for people now. Like things are just so easy. Menus are in QR codes, you know? So I think the QR code on the business card, and especially you said having a biz bigger business card, you want to stand out in any way possible. Right. Absolutely. I agree. And even now, like when I'm networking at other events, I don't have like a regular business card where I hand like, hey, here's my business card. I have something called Popple. Popple's on the back of my phone and I just we exchange information like this so that way you can say hey i lost her business card but wow i have it on my phone already i can just reach out to her um and i really feel like we have to get away from that traditional paper you know and we have to find innovative ways to go with the times like like you said this is gen x was this gen z gen x which one i don't know where we're in but they like it's like the popcorn they have to have it right then and there and if not, they're going to forget about it. So you have to stay on top of the times with the business and marketing right now. Definitely. And talking about getting rid of paper, your company is also eco-friendly. Eco oh, Would absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, of course, public health. I do anything to make sure we save the environment. Um, I am a pescatarian. I was a vegan for a while. So I do everything, clean materials. I, I try to not do emissions, you know, try to keep everything clean. And I think it's very important. And one thing about that is, it sets me apart from other competitors where I can operate inside, say, for instance, a museum. I can pull right in and we can operate right there. Um, yesterday we did a, a bit at Hotel Hyatt and they were so amazed that my little car drove into the, the lobby. It was sitting there. They're like, how did a car get in here? Mm -hmm. And I was like, because it's electric. That's amazing. So so the bar cart is electric. Okay, that, that is really awesome. I was wondering how it was eco-friendly, but that definitely sets you so apart from your competitors. And you talked a little bit about, you know, how this was a COVID business and this is kind of like the new normal. So talk about how you you brought that into um, society, this idea. Well, you know, when we're in COVID, people were stuck home. So you couldn't go to the bar. So why not bring the bar to you? It's like a genius idea, right? It's mm -hmm. so genius. Like, you, like I said, you have to adapt to the times. So for, I seen the opportunity, I was like, hey, look, we can just take this opportunity and just, we can just take the bar to you. So that's why my, my slogan is bringing the booze to you. And that's what we do. That's amazing. I love that. And that is such a good idea. And, you know, a lot of good things have come out of COVID. And I think, you know, this unique drinking experience, you can personalize it. It's just such a great idea. And especially now, everyone, there's so many events going on because we can be with each other and have these events and parties. So it's also just such a great, great market to be in. So you do all types of events. Yeah, absolutely. We start with kids events. Um, so one thing about, we just don't do just alcohol. I, I, I always have to stress that like, Hey, we do cater to kids. Like I can cover up booze and bubbles to make it be kid friendly. I can put something over that, but we can serve mocktails. We can do coffee. We can do tea. We can do any type of juice, um, lemonade. My favorite party this far was a lemonade party. And it was a, a little girl's one year old party. And it was so cute. And it, we were like a lemonade stand, but out of the truck. So, um, yeah, we we just don't cater to just adults. That's why you have to know your audience. That's why I was like, hey, my audience are those who are looking to take their event to the next level. So I always market my services to say, hey, you know how parents, parents are so competitive when it comes to parties. They're like, my party has to be the best party. So I, I try to make sure I strive to those parents and market to those parents and let me know, like, you can book us for anything. We're here. Yeah, yeah, and that's so good. Like, you're not cutting off your audience because you do do cocktails. You also do mocktails. Like, you really can um, satisfy any type of event. And also, like you said, you were a bartender. And, you know, events are fun. Like, who doesn't want to go to a party and, you know, be drinking with uh, people and networking? So, like, how do you – is it just amazing, like, doing something you love and that's also just so fun, too, and also making – profit off of it and revenue you know what what's really making fun is i can drink on the job 
okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, not where I'm like drunk. It's just like I sip and I'm like having a good time. I'm co-mingling with all my clients and they're going to let you know like anyone who said they had a, an event with booze and bubbles, they'll let you know that we were a life of the party. When they come up to the car, I'm like, hey girl, hey, or hey man, you better get this drink, you know, like mm-hmm. it's just me being personal with my clients and you know, um, making it Instagram worthy. That's the big thing now. If it's not Instagram worthy, it's not going to thrive. And I hate to say that. I hate to say it, but Instagram, if it's if it's not marketable where people can take a picture for, with it, they're not going to book it. They're not going to want it. So I make sure I always strive to make it the next big thing. Every event has to top the next event. And that's what I strive to do. And I will say your company is so Instagrammable. The champagne walls, the tap truck. It's just such a great idea because you're right. People are posting this on their story. They're tagging you. And also, like you said, like you are building your personal brand by being that fun and bubbly person at the party. And other people at the party will remember you. So when they have their party, they'll know who to book. And that's good. And And then that's why I say I always want to make your event memorable because we want to be we want to have repeat customers. We want you to come and say, hey, girl, can we have you again? That's I I. I strive to have repeat customers. That's you want to leave a lasting impression to where impression where people are coming back for more and more. What would you say your biggest accomplishment has been thus far in your company? I think my biggest accomplishment thus far is the financial freedom it has given me, and not just about the money. It's about the freedom where on a on a Thursday or on a Monday, I can go have lunch at any time. You know, it gives me that that's better, better health, health, better life outcomes. Like I'm, I'm not stressed at work. I'm, I'm having a good time. I'm, I can go Pilates and yoga at any time. Like I, I have a better stress free life right now, and I think it. That's what I mean by financial financial freedom is that I'm not bound to someone's job. I'm, I'm my own job, you know, and I just like the, the freedom I have. Like, I'm, I feel free. I don't feel confined, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Especially having a new family, time is so important, and you can't get that time back, especially you said you had the one-year-old, his birthday. Yeah. Also, I want to say happy birthday to him. <laughs> he is, he's having his best life right now. He actually Good. turned three. He's three now. Today's yeah. his third birthday. Um, he's in this the Glacier Museum having his time his life with my husband and I um that's why I said I, I love the freedom that it's given me mm-hmm. yeah have there been any challenges that you've faced and maybe tell us how you overcome them you know my biggest challenge to date is um I'm gonna be honest I I think sometimes while being a black owned business it can be a little bit challenging and that, and I, not in a bad way. Some, you know, we, I have, we have our moments to where if, um, if someone found out that we're black owned, we may not solidify that client. Um, and you know, those are just racial inequities that we, I, we would never be able to overcome. But the 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 good always outweighs the bad. Um, so it doesn't happen often. It, it may happen once every eight months, you know. But um, I think that's my only my biggest challenge right now. But like I said, I don't make it an excuse because I just go 10 times harder. I'm like, oh, poor me. No, I'm just going to show you why you should have booked this business. You're lost. That's amazing. I really want to transition to social media now. And I love your social media page and how everyone promotes you and the collabs you do with other businesses. So tell us a little bit about maybe first, like how social media is important to your business. Well, um, like just to piggyback off, like I had to make my business Instagrammable because it is an Instagrammable business. But I had to also keep in mind that if Instagram goes down, how do I market to my audience as well? Um, or any social media goes down. So social media plays a major part in my business because, like I said, once someone posts it, I gain a follower and then I gain a client. So. It's very important for um, for me to keep my page as clean and aesthetically pleasing as possible. Um, I tell anyone just don't post anything. Make sure your make sure your pictures are professional. 
make sure it flows. Make sure it's just not all over the place. Make sure it tells a story. You know, and I think that's what I try to make my Instagram convey. Like, I, I, I want it to be clean because when you book my business, I want to see that it's professional. It all falls in line. It's a luxury bar service, you know? And I think it's very important to have that picture painted for your clients because that's going to out that's going to weed away the other clients that you don't want to have to deal with and then it's going to bring in all the all the clients that you do want to you know interact with definitely and i will say you have such a great business and marketing mindset and again you went to school for help so how did you learn all of this information about you know you said you made your own business um plan and business strategy so where did you learn this and maybe what advice could you give to listeners on on how to learn if they didn't go to school for business okay so again because i didn't go to school for business as well i honestly reading reading is fundamental and i it's so many it's so many free tools out here you can use um if you live in tampa hillsborough county also offers um my free business classes through the county and also they give you uh, financial literacy classes for free they give you how to make a business plan for free all these resources are free so i utilize all those free resources um of course it's talking to other business owners as well i feel as if that brought like that that added on to the knowledge that i needed to be successful now keep in mind i'm still learning every single day I learn something new every single day. There's never enough knowledge to learn about being a business owner. There's so many components. You just don't run a business. Um, And I feel as if utilizing those free resources, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to start a business. Your business does not have to be perfect to start. The goal is just to start. When I started my business, it was not where it was. Like, I wasn't... My Instagram did not look how I look, you know, if you and and I kind of keep some of the pictures up to show the transition over our business to see what we how we have grown because we just didn't start the work works like this. Mm-hmm. And what skills would you say that you found really vital to your career? Communication and leadership skills. Um, although it's just my husband and I right now, as we are expanding, it's very important that we communicate. Um, you want to you want to be able to communicate with all your clients and you want to have those adaptive communication skills and the reason why i say leadership because as a leader you ha- again you have to be adapted to any environment that you're in so those are two of the biggest qualities i really say that are important as a business owner right now especially for me is leadership and communication um as well as integrity clients want to know that they can trust you they want to they want to feel that trust me and I, I and i i definitely thrive on um, integrity trust communication and leadership yeah i think those are great skills and, and just values to have as any business owner and uh your customers really do see that back into social media are you i know you're super on instagram and everything but um are you using other platforms such as facebook or are you taking advantage of tiktok or even pinterest like you said you found your idea on pinterest so how are you taking advantage of those platforms i'm learning how to use facebook i never had facebook ever so i crazy thing is i'm not a big social media person but i feel as if i'm learning how to use facebook because if you really want to make money the audience is on facebook everyone tells me you have to market on Facebook. You need to know how to utilize Facebook. So I'm learning how to do that. And TikTok. TikTok, I have to stop watching the videos because I cannot focus on TikTok. But I'm learning how to use TikTok as well and learning the hashtags and learning how to um, do everything on TikTok. It's actually pretty fun. Yeah. I definitely agree. Um, Gentech Marketing, we really specialize in Facebook ads. And I think every company should be on Facebook and especially a company like yours running ads because that really is how you'll reach your big audience. And there's just so many people on Facebook. <laughs> and yeah, it's, yeah, I agree. And um, even when I ran about a couple ads on Facebook already and I generated business with Facebook, you know, those conversation starters, they're like, hey, what is this? You know, they may not be on Instagram, but they're on Facebook, like you said. And um, it's really, it has really helped me out a lot. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, it, it is really a new, unique drinking experience. So people might not even know they need it until they see it. So you really want to get your company in front of the eyes of as many people as you can. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And even for weddings, too, as well, like um, promoting to weddings. Weddings are, we have grown so big in the wedding industry here in Tampa. Um, we are elevating that new cocktail experience for, <laughs> for Tampa. So I'm really excited for where we're going with the wedding scene. Um, I love weddings. One, because I love cake. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, but I just, I just genuinely love where, um, where we're going in the wedding industry right now. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to take advantage of Instagram reels with your business? I actually have. Um, the highest reel count I have had on Instagram, on my reel is almost like, I think it was 9,000. I haven't reached the 10,000 mark yet, but I'm learning. Mm -hmm. um, in the last, what was 8,000? So they're, they're getting there. But I'm I'm learning how to use the hashtags, hashtags placement, and what what is um perfect for my business. Definitely, I think Instagram Reels, especially right now with the algorithm, it's crazy how like easy they're making it to go viral because you know they're seeing TikTok and all the users are going to TikTok and they don't want to lose them and they definitely don't want to lose these content creators. So they're making Reels really accessible for everyone and especially small businesses. Yeah, and even now for small businesses, they're allowing us to use audio now. Like at first, it was blocked off for business pages, but now mm -hmm. we're able to use um, audio for our reels now. So I'm so excited. Instead of having to find someone's page, save the audio, then use it mm -hmm. now because they just have it accessible for us. So I'm so happy that Instagram is doing that. But what I really don't like is from Instagram is how they change their logarithm. You have to know the logarithm like every couple months. It's really crazy. Your team right now, is it, is it just you and your husband? It's just my husband and I. Um, I, I. Of course, I have people who help me out when I need like the extra help. But um, it's just my husband and I. And we're looking to expand because we want to we wanna take on like different projects. And of course, we want to go into different cities. But it's it's my baby and it's so hard for me to let go it's so hard for me to trust like people to come in and give the same quality that i would give to my clients <sighs> so yeah it's hard yeah. but i know to give a little to get a lot mm -hmm. and yeah. what would you say are your other plans for the future do you think expanding would you do um maybe something else besides the champagne walls and the tap truck or you think like that's your niche and you're going to stay with that well, that's one of my keys. That's one. Of, that's one that's happening right now. But I have something big happening, um, so I cannot wait to that that baby unveils. Um, so I think the the next thing is it's gonna put me to the next level of where I want to go. And just I'm just envisioning it as I'm talking to you right now, and it gives me chills. Mm -hmm. Like that's gonna that's gonna be it. This is it's gonna be it. Well, I can't wait to find out what that is. Um, I'm going to ask you one last question. What's the biggest takeaway that you hope our audience and listeners learn from this podcast? I want to tell audi the audience not to be limited by your physical resources and just to elevate the ones that you do not see. Like, you know, make sure that you are researching. Make sure that you before you start a business that you write a business plan business plans are very 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 important make sure you have someone that you can feed off your ideas to and that you trust them and if, they, if you don't trust them you know um get a sign that make you sign an nda to protect your assets to protect your vision but it's very important that you do have a solidified um, foundation as well as i do believe that you should don't be scared to introduce yourself. Don't be scared to speak up because the sky is not the limit. It's bigger than that. The universe is huge and Tampa is huge. Tampa is growing. So right now, if you haven't started the business, if you have the idea, start it now. It does not have to be perfect. It does not have to have every single thing to be luxury and fab. Let your business grow and grow with your business. Thank you, CJ. That was perfect advice to end it. And I'm just going to like recap a little bit. So again, this is CJ Rothwell Thompson. She's the CEO and founder of Boost and Bubbles, a unique drinking experience. She talked to us a lot and, you know, gave so much motivation to our listeners and show that you don't have to go to school for business and you don't have to go to school for any of this stuff. You can still be a business owner and be an entrepreneur. There's so many resources out there. And as long as you just continually keep learning and use the resources around you, you can do anything. Like you said, the sky is not the limit. She talked a lot about giving a little to get a lot. And, you know, when you're first starting your business, that's what you have to do. 
we talked about making it so easy for your customers to find you, to find your website, to find you on socials and standing out and, you know, being different and just adapting to the times and environment and how important that is in this business. So CJ, thank you so much. And do you want to tell our audience where they can find you on social media? Oh, absolutely. Please follow me on Instagram at Booze and Bubbles, two S's. Um, and we are on Facebook at Booze and Bubbles Tampa, as well as we are on TikTok. I think my name is Booze and Bubbles on TikTok. I'm not, I forgot, of course. Okay, I'm learning TikTok. I'm still new to that. Um, but of course, um, I would give my address, but my, my website. But again, accessibility is key. So once you find my Instagram, you'll find everything else. Perfect. And you can find us at, at Gentech Marketing on all social platforms. So thank you guys so much and we'll see you next week.